from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis declined to say today whether he is preparing to lead the country to an early general election, telling reporters he always prepares for events a year in advance. Asked in Eleuthera if he plans to dissolve parliament within the next week or two and call an early election, he did not give a definitive answer. Dr. Minnis said, quote, you would note I've said repeatedly, and it's been demonstrated, I always prepare at least one year in advance. I'm one of those who believe in preparation and we're going through our preparation, and in the event things change, we're ready. Some free national movement insiders expect Dr. Minnis to soon call an early election. The party has secured its paraphernalia inside the country, and rally dates have been set up through to at least mid-August, according to Tribune sources. However, officials acknowledge Dr. Minnis's plans can change for whatever reason. On Thursday, Health Minister Renwood Wells expressed confidence that the country could hold an election despite the COVID-19 pandemic, even as cases climb. I'm Faced with low Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine supplies, the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee has decided to offer only second-dose jabs in New Providence and Grand Bahama. According to Dr. Mersaline Dal-Regis, committee chairwoman, the decision was made on Wednesday as officials seek to manage the available supply until a third installment of AstraZeneca vaccines arrive in the country. She said second-dose appointments are available until July 27th and coincide with the arrival of more vaccines scheduled to arrive on July 27th. In addition, she said the committee supports mixing vaccine brands AstraZeneca and Pfizer, according to research reviewed by the committee. A man became the country's latest murder victim after he was killed outside a home in the Elizabeth Estates community on Thursday. According to Assistant Superintendent Audley Peters, shortly before 6 p.m., police were alerted to a shooting on Mauritius Avenue in Elizabeth Estates. Upon arrival, officers found an unresponsive man on the ground with gunshot wounds. Emergency medical services were called and later pronounced him dead at the scene. Former Tall Pines MP Leslie Miller has confirmed he will not run as an independent candidate in the upcoming general election, insisting this vote is far too important not to support the Progressive Liberal Party. Mr. Miller, who has for several weeks been seen campaigning with various PLP candidates, told the Tribune he has absolute faith in the opposition party and its ability to get the job done. Previously, he had threatened to run as an independent candidate if the party did not offer him a nomination for the impending general election. When they did not choose him and instead ratified former Pine Ridge MP Dr. Michael Darville as the party's Tall Pines candidate. Many wondered whether Mr. Miller would live up to his threat. Asked what his next move was yesterday, Mr. Miller said, quote, I am not running as an independent. I'm just helping out my colleagues. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, former President Jean-Bertrand Aristide returned to Haiti on Friday after nearly a month in Cuba, thrilling hundreds of supporters who gathered at the airport at a time of tensions over the recent assassination of the country's leader. Aristide, a charismatic yet divisive figure in Haiti who was receiving unspecified medical treatment in Cuba, arrives back in a country simmering with tension over the July 7th assassination of President Jovenel Muiz as new details about the investigation emerged. Colombia's police chief on Friday accused a former Haitian government official of ordering ex-Colombian soldiers to kill Muiz. The United Kingdom recorded more than 50,000 new coronavirus cases in one day Friday for the first time in six months, as the British government's top medical advisor warned that the number of people hospitalized with COVID-19 could hit quite scary levels within weeks. Government figures showed another 51,870 confirmed lab cases, the highest number since mid-January. Infections have surged in recent weeks, mainly among unvaccinated younger people, as a result of the far more contagious Delta variant and the easing of lockdown restrictions. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A surface trough northeast of the area will enhance shower activity across the northwest Bahamas as it slowly migrates westwards. Meanwhile, surface ridging will dominate elsewhere through tonight. Boaters in the northwest Bahamas should remain vigilant due to the threat of possible water spout activity. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the slight risk of rip currents along eastern shorelines. For the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy 
cloudy, warm, and humid, with widely scattered showers and the chance of isolated thunderstorms through tonight. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds east-northeast to east-southeast at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. For the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny, hot, and a bit breezy, with light passing showers and the slight chance of isolated thunderstorms this afternoon, becoming fair to partly cloudy and warm, with a few isolated showers mainly in the southeast Bahamas tonight. Winds easterly at 15 knots, seas 3 to 5 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 74. The sun will set this afternoon at 8 p.m. and will rise tomorrow morning at 631. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.